Hi, I'm Steve Dickman, president for Outpost Centers International. I'm here today in the country of Kenya. This is Outpost Centers International on the front lines. We're doing an OCI convention here. Nadesh, you run an operation there in Tanzania. You're an OCI member uh, school there, and we call it the Eden Valley Foster Care. But you've started a new program there as well, training missionaries to go out and reach into some of these areas that are almost unentered. Tell us, what is this? How does this program work? What do you call it? And yeah, you know, just describe this missionary training program. Yes, it's a medical missionary course actually. Okay. But we did not want to call it medical missionary because of the the stigma sometimes that comes. You okay. Know, I'm a I'm a medical doctor. I've been trained, and we are not medical doctors. We're just medical missionaries. So we asked the Lord what to call it, and He said call it Ministry of Benevolence. Ministry of Benevolence. Yes. Okay, that's a pretty big name. It's a big name. And so we shorten it to me be. And actually the whole philosophy of the of the training comes through this uh, acronym me be means I have to be God is training me to be the mm -hmm. person he wants me to be so that he can empower me to do the things he wants to do mm -hmm. through me. What kind of training do these missionaries get? So we have uh, Bible, health, and uh, uh, hand care. Um, all the all our doctrines and the sanctuary yeah. okay. uh, revelation and so on, the righteousness by faith, right. and um, the health, hydrotherapy, physiology, anatomy, uh, massage, and so on. Just a typical right. medical missionary okay. course, but also. They learn carpentry, sewing, brick making, beekeeping, organic gardening, cosmetics. Uh, uh, so hand skills that will make them useful on the mission. I, I want say. five of those missionaries to come to me and help me. <laughs> Give me just five. Oh, you, they are there for you. Oh, praise God. We don't have five today, friends, but we have one. Ray, you just graduated from this uh, medical missionary uh, me be training yes. at yes. the school there in Tanzania. Tell us. How did this impact your life? So for me, it's uh, really amazing to be in Hidden Valley and the change that I saw in my life because before there's, uh, my, my relationship with God was not very good. But when I reached there, one thing that had come to my mind for the first time, I believe is God who is talking to me. So is that I was alone, only Ethiopian there in that place. And I realized that God is now is only my friend. So what mm -hmm. I can do is to surrender myself to him, to ask him to guide me during the missionary, during missionary training. So when I surrender myself to God, God was faithful to wake me up here in the morning to first have my devotion and spend time with him. So it's really amazing. In our classes, it's very, it was very powerful especially in, uh, I want to mention one class, sanctuary class. So our mom here, she was uh, inspired by Holy Spirit to take her through all those uh, classes. And I remember one statement that she always said at the front of us, in Eden Valley, we have a river. And she always say, now, because you are here, self have to die. You have to throw self into that river. Throw self into the river. Into the river. Work. Was that easy or hard? It wasn't easy because <laughs> you really, th there's a lot of things that God was showing us little by little in our character development. So you gained some skills there. Yes. What kind of skills do you have? Can you lay bricks, make bricks? I can make brick. Yeah. And I also, I can also have uh, some furniture. Make furniture. Furniture. What else can you do? And gardening. And what now is God calling you to do? What is your next step in your life journey? For me, I feel the call that God want me to go to Ethiopia. As in Ethiopia, uh, it's unreached mo most of the, the places, especially in my, not only my region, but there's some part of Ethiopia which they don't have an idea of uh, three angels message. So my plan is the picture that I saw there in Eden Valley, I say that and I feel that God is calling me that I could go there and stuff lead the same school which is in Eden Valley. Oh, as I see there. This is amazing. You're going to have another school yeah. in Ethiopia maybe on the front lines where there's very little to no Seventh-day Adventist presence. Exactly. What you've learned there will allow you to go there and actually start something. 
-hmm. Put your hands and make things and start things and teach other people the three angels' messages. Exactly. Thank you, Ray, for joining us today. Thank you, Nadesh, for joining us. What do you have to say about this? Is this something we should repeat everywhere in the world? Or what do you think? I am. I am very thrilled the way God is leading this. We just started this uh, at the local level. Um, then we receive students from all over Tanzania. And now the Lord has been sending students from Zambia, from uh, uh, Malawi, from Ethiopia. Ethiopia is so far from us, we, we see. And all of them, they have a desire to replicate the school. And that is our dream. Our dream is to see similar school all over Africa so that we can proclaim the fourth angel's message. There is a lot of ignorance in terms of uh, uh, um, the, the messages that God has entrusted to us for the moment. We want to see a people ready to meet their Lord through similar schools replicated throughout Africa. Friends, Amen. this you heard today from OCI on the front lines in Kenya, Africa. Friends, the country, the world is wide open mm -hmm. for these kind of young people that are rightly trained so that they can go and share the gospel so that this work can be finished so that we can go home. If you want to find out more about how you can get involved in either supporting ministries like this or a ministry of your own, then call us at OCI. This is Outpost Centers on the Front Lines. I'm Steve Dickman. Thank you for watching today.